Fireworks are exploding this week at Gallery Warehouse Furniture. This is a great time to declare your independence from high furniture prices. At Warehouse Furniture, we keep costs down and pass the savings on to you. Nowhere else in West Texas can you buy famous name brand furniture for less. So for the lowest prices on Ashley, Bassett, Benchcraft, Lane, Simmons, Sealy, and many more, shop Warehouse Furniture. Declare your independence and say no to high furniture prices. Warehouse Furniture will save you money. Shop Abilene, Brownwood, and Snyder. Hi, folks. John, Saturn of Abilene. Got some really great deals to talk to you about today. Like this 99 Chevy Tahoe. Today, $4.15 a month. I have a 96 Ford Windstar with leather, fully loaded for only $1.80 a month today. And I have a extended cab Ford F-150 pickup, 98 model, only $2.75 a month. And a 2000 Nissan pickup, under $200 a month. Saturn of Abilene, 1424 South Clack. Have you been able to renew your driver's license by mail? If so, you'll want to call Standard Insurance. At Standard, we're discounting our preferred car insurance rates up to an additional 30% if you renewed your license by mail. And if you qualify, you can start your coverage over the phone. It's that easy. So take a minute to call Standard. You'll be glad you did. Call Standard Insurance. Tab News, Abilene's number one rated news team. Number one weeknights at 10. Number one weeknights at 6, beating all other local news stations combined. Number one weekends at 6 and 10, broadcasting more local news than any other station in the market. Number one in viewership, sign on to sign off. The number one rated news station in the big country. KTAB News, number one, with coverage you can count on. KTAB News, Abilene's number one rated news team. Live from the KTAB Broadcast Center in Abilene, this is KTAB News at 10 with Bob Barton, Jennifer Douglas, Chief Meteorologist Buzz Lopez, and David Robinette on sports. Good evening and thank you for choosing KTAB News tonight. We're coming to you live from ACU, the uh, Crutcher Scott baseball field, where just a tremendous fireworks show has just been completed. People are filing out here. Music is still playing in the background. It Thousands been, of people. It has been a great evening, and just be careful traveling home. It's going to be a traffic jam for a while, but just take your time. And, uh, and if you're listening, uh, of course, you're in your car, so you're probably not watching it. Well, there down. could be some folks have TVs. <laughs> have well, car. TVs, who knows? Well, you know, many state school volunteers are among us here tonight. They're taking up donations for Centennial Park. It's the first wheelchair accessible park in Abilene, completely accessible for those in wheelchairs. KTAB's Jennifer Woody has that story. But there will be no limits for those who come to Centennial Park. It will even allow the disabled to do special activities. We hope what it will do is help make the community aware that there are people with disabilities and differences, but uh, they are just like us and enjoy the same type things that we do, and so they will have that same opportunity. Now, when the school reaches the $300,000 goal, they'll start building, maybe by September, they certainly hope, and should be done by the end of the year. And it was a day for celebration and fun at the city park in Hamlin for this 4th of July. Hamlin businesses and several local organizations decided to bring back the tradition of having a 4th of July celebration. The kids took part in sack races, egg races, and a watermelon eating Yay! contest. Well, we're trying to bring back something that we used to do in Hamlin a long time ago, and that's uh, celebrate the July 4th and uh, get the families out here for a picnic and games and food booths and all that kind of stuff. So we're just trying to have fun today. Couldn't ask for an extra day. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's a, it's a beautiful day. Uh, we, we'll take rain, though, at any time, but it's a beautiful day. 
the Fisher County Sheriff's Department, the First Baptist Church, the Catholic Church, Hospital Auxiliary, and the Hamlin Lion Club all sponsored booths. The event organizers hope that this will become an annual event once again in Hamlin. And the residents of Sweetwater lined the streets today for their town's annual 4th of July parade. And the parade started at Broadway and Pecan Streets and moved through downtown and traveled on to Newman Park for a short program. The parade featured local officials along with riding clubs, the Boy Scouts, and Armed Forces veterans. And the Sweetwater Community Band also took part. And some Abilene residents began celebrating the 4th of July earlier this morning by having a parade of their own. Families gathered on the corner of Hillcrest and Bacon to have a march around the block. Some participants drove lawnmowers, golf carts, tractors, bicycles, tricycles, and cars around the neighborhood. And some chose to even walk. But everyone wore red, white, and blue, and the kids were waving flags. And on the city south side, uh, the neighborhood of Tanglewood enjoyed their own parade. Kids of all ages came out to celebrate the 4th. The parade started at Tanglewood Pool and went all the way around the neighborhood. They made their route on foot and some even revved up those power wheels. And it was quite a long trip for those little ones. Well, of course, parades were not the only thing going on in the big country today. In the Fisher County community of Rotan, residents turned out to take part in the uh, annual softball tournament at the city park. Softball play started around 10 this morning, lasted into the afternoon. Ten teams were taking part. A fireworks display went on there in Rotan tonight as the sun set and the clouds, uh, there were no clouds as the uh, sun went away and the, the sky was nice and dark for the shows. Seagoing vessels from around the world are making their way along the Hudson River as part of Opsail 2000. This international gathering in New York Harbor helped celebrate the nation's birthday. Lee Cowan reports. Under a gentle 4th of July breeze, history came alive on the Hudson. 150 tall ships under full sail gave an enthusiastic crowd a new show of the old. Oh, they're just beautiful uh, vessels. They uh, just have a beauty and a magnificence to them. With masts towering hundreds of feet in the air, manned by sailors hundreds of miles from home, Opsail 2000 was a quiet blend of patriotism and international goodwill, just the way President John F. Kennedy had envisioned nearly 40 years ago. We must resolve never to close the golden door behind us and always not only to welcome people to our borders, but to welcome people into our hearts. The International Naval Review, which kicked off the festivities, has a tradition of its own, dating back more than 100 years. A procession of two dozen warships from 14 countries passed by for a presidential salute. Not a show of force, but a sign of peace. As picturesque as it was, the spectacle did draw a smaller than expected crowd, which some had thought might swell to more than 70,000 ships on the river, both big and small. But even without the crowds, it was still the largest peacetime gathering of ships in maritime history, a silent testament to the lure of the sea for both sailors and landlubbers alike. I think it's just very inspiring for people to see that things like this actually existed at one time. Security was almost overwhelming. 28,000 New York City police officers were on duty, more than cover Times Square on New Year's Eve. And they were joined by more than 200 Coast Guard vessels patrolling the water. That presence, combined with lower crowd numbers, said one official, meant Opsail 2000 went off like a breeze. Lee Cowan, CBS News, New York. This is a special Independence, Independence Day for nearly 900 people from 80 countries. They became U.S. citizens today in Detroit. While many Americans had their minds set on barbecues and boats, they were taking solemn oaths of allegiance at the convention center. Another thousand people, many waving flags and holding balloons, watched as the new citizens were officially naturalized. The new citizens had to complete lengthy applications, undergo background checks, and pass tests on U.S. government and history. All were permanent U.S. residents for at least five years. And the Census Bureau reports that there were nine million naturalized citizens in the U.S. In night since 1997. Now, here are some of the sights and sounds of Fourth of July celebrations held around the country.
what a show. <laughs> well, it was a hot day here in Texas, especially if you were...